Today we will implement Caesar cipher. For that we need to learn ASCII codes. I will use C++ and quick note, if you're a Python user, you need to use functions ORT and CHR to move between integer and character. Look at this simple C++ code on the right. Create string hello and print its first character. This should obviously print H. Let's verify that. Yes, that's H. But let's see what happens if I create an integer variable equal to this first character, and then I try to print it. This doesn't produce compilation error because characters and integers are almost the same thing, and one can be casted into the other. I can here explicitly say I'm casting to int, but that's not needed when we say int x becomes this character. So I will drop those optional brackets and casting. 104, what is this random value? Oh, it's not a random value, it is ASCII code of character h. And we can look it up in this ASCII table on the left. Find lowercase h. Now this is a sequence of bits. Uh, with this sequence, computer represents h, and it corresponds to this number, 104. If instead I wanted to cast character m into integer, that would be 109. If I wanted question mark, that would be 63. Because characters can be treated as numbers, they can be added, subtracted, compared, which becomes very useful. And let's see some examples of that. I can increase a character by one, just like I would do with a number. Let's print the full string, run it, and I got yellow. Why is it i? Because i is just after h in the alphabet. 104 plus 1 is 105. If I instead increase h by, let's say, 3, I will get k, because it's 107. Let's try it. Plus 3, print it. I should get kello. a plus 25, that would be z. The English alphabet is 26 characters, and it's all those characters in order. You can move between them by adding or subtracting. Say that somebody enters their name, and I need to verify if the first character is lowercase or uppercase. I will create an infinite loop to make it easy to test. How can I check if s of 0 is uppercase? I don't want 26 ifs, that would be bad. But I know that ASCII code of uppercase characters are from 65 all the way down to 90. That will give me from uppercase A to Z. So let's use that. If 65 smaller equal than, and here optionally I can again type int s of 0, but that's not needed. s of 0 doesn't exceed 90. Then what can I say? Uppercase and else bad. This means lowercase, or also it might mean that it's a completely different character, like a digit. Let's verify that. I'm Camille, bad, uppercase Camille. Okay, this thing, bad, this thing, bad, all uppercase, good. I entered this string. The algorithm looked at the first character, s of zero, it verified that its ASCII code is between 65 and 90, and it said, okay, this is uppercase. We can achieve the same without knowing values of 65 and Z, without looking at this table. How? I just want S of 0 to be at least value of uppercase A. So first, I could type this, which is a very uh, complicated way to do it. Same here for Z, but even easier, I can just type this and s of 0 doesn't exceed uppercase z. When comparing, computer will use ASCII codes of those characters. So this is an easy way to check if something is uppercase. Yes, there is a function for that in C++, I think it is upper of s of 0, but we want to learn ASCII codes right now. We'll need this later in Caesar cipher. Let's understand every character as a number from 0 to 25. Because English alphabet contains 26 characters, I want to treat A as 0, B as 1, and so on, Z as 25. Can we do that? Well, lowercase a, how can I change this to 0? I can subtract 97 from it, but that's a complicated way to think about it. 
I just want distance for every character from lowercase a. Let's see. For every character in C, I want this character minus a. For a itself, it would give me zero. For anything else, it will be this distance or difference in ASCII codes. Let's now print x, new line, compile, run, and I got 25 for z, 4 for e, 1 for b, and so on. Every lowercase character was changed into something in range from 0 to 25. Not only will need that in Caesar cipher, but also it will be helpful in this next problem. Say that there is a string where the first character is a digit, uh, the following characters don't really matter, and now I want to print this digit squared. I cannot obviously say s of 0 print x times x, because this would print whatever the ASCII code of 6 is, 54, that's ASCII code of 6, squared. I don't want 54 squared, I want 6 squared. You can now pause the video and think how to fix that. To fix that, we can change character into number from 0 to 9, just like what we did with characters az. Minus 0. This will give you a difference between this car versus 0. Now, if we run this, also I'm sorry if I should pronounce char every time, it's just strange, char character, 36, indeed that's 6 squared. Sponsor time, if you're a high school student, check out Train and Win competition by Replay Challenges. It's a series of three weeks of easy educational problems. The first week starts tomorrow, the Monday, 14th of February, and from Monday to Friday you have time to solve a few easy educational problems. Problems look like this, input, output, your algorithm needs to compute something, standard competitive programming stuff. If your teacher registers your school for the leaderboard, then the best school, your school will fight for 2000 euro donation for educational purposes. So it's a nice competition and your school has an opportunity to win some money. It's a great initiative. And also after that, there is a big contest in March for teams of high school students and then there's open division. I participated in some past divisions, even one, two of them. So I honestly recommend the competition and this educational series. Go check out link in the description. What is Caesar cipher? It's a cipher to slightly encode a string. Let's say that you want to send a message attack to your, uh, to your armies, but you don't want to send a direct word because maybe it would be captured. So instead, you decide to change every character just slightly. Say that every character changes into the next one in the alphabet. A changes into B, T into U, and so on. K, L. This would be a, a attack shifted by one or rotated by one with Caesar cipher. Instead of shifting by one, usually 13 is used, or some other number, it just shifted, shifted by a constant, where you need to know the starting string and the shift value to get the new string, and then to get it back you need to well, subtract instead, move it back. Let's try to code it, first a shift by one. For every character, it's easy to just take this by reference, for every character C in S, C++. Let's try this and print S at the end. We should get this boo something, yeah. But there's obviously a case when this doesn't work. You can think about it and pause the video for a moment. What happens if I try to encode zebra? Let's run this. I got here a very strange character. Again, it's not a random character. It's just what appears here after lowercase z. Lowercase z is 122, plus 1 it's 123. And that turns out to be an open curly bracket. What's a fix? We can put an if here. If this is already lowercase z, then it becomes a. To every character we add this shift, but then it wraps around the alphabet. Else C++. Run this again, we should get a. Yes, af from zebra. And if we want to shift this by a different constant, like 13, which is very common, we can repeat this 13 times. 
13 times make this if run and that's Caesar, Caesar cipher rotation of 13 of this word zebra. It's not an efficient uh, version because we repeat something 13 times. So once again, pause the video to think about getting rid of this for loop. We almost can just simply add 13 to a character, almost because still it's not an int and there will be an overflow if we do that. Uh, character is something of one byte type and we will get something negative here. So sadly we cannot do that. But after casting to integer, we can. And it's easiest to grab the value of C minus A. This will be a value from 0 to 25. And now you can do whatever you want with it, in particular add 13. It can, of course, exceed 25, it can be 26 and so on, but then you can just subtract 26. For this, the best is modulo, modulo 26. 28 will give you 2. And then you want this to be, how can we back get from 0 to 25 from this number? How can we get a character? We can increase A by it. C is just a reference to SI. Maybe this will be easier for some people to understand. For every character, grab SI minus A and then put it back like this. Here we add 13, but if it exceeds 25, this stops being a legal value, we subtract 26 by using modulo. Then lowercase a plus 5, that will be what f plus 25, that would be z. Let's check if it's still Mroen. Yes, it's Mroen indeed. Here's a better implementation where I created a function for that. A function that takes string s and the shift or rotation that we need, for example 13. And I tried it here with zebra and rotation of 3. It's a different file. Z, for example, plus 3, that's a, b, c. So we get c something. Should, choit. Uh, what's interesting is if you shift up by 10 and then up by, for example, 16 here and you stop, that's plus 26, so you didn't do anything. John changed into John. Here's some homework for you. First, you can grab this code from my GitHub repository or you can implement it from scratch and make it work for uppercase characters, or even better, make it work for both lowercase and uppercase characters. You can detect which type you have. And also you shouldn't touch spaces. They should be left uh, unharmed or other special characters. Also, you can add decoding, which means from this new message like should, you should get back zebra by subtracting free. You can use online decoders to check if your program is correct. There are also three easy code forces problems for you. Links in the description. One, two, three. The middle of them is most interesting because here we need to move between lowercase and uppercase. Try not to use built-in functions for that and instead use ASCII code to practice what you learned today. Thank you a lot for watching. Once again, huge thanks to Replayed Code Challenges for sponsoring the video. And I'm really happy about getting this kind of sponsor where it's something I would honestly recommend to a friend. And I even participated in past editions of their contests. All right, bye.